Robin Boom is an independent soil advisor whose business helps farmers address soil fertility issues. Robin has been working with Waikato dairy farmer Grant Davey for the past four years. We have 340 acres and 310 cows. The farm is quite a wet farm, especially during the winter. In the past, every fert advisor that had come has always come from a company and to me they're pushing their products and there's just a general suspicion and that drew us to, to Robin really. The, the idea of dealing with someone who wasn't making or his income wasn't directly related to the advice given. My approach to the soil and that's why I'm using Robin because of the amount of minerals he tests for means that we can actually balance and know what we're doing, we're not just guessing. Am I saving money? That is not what this is about. This is about getting our farm performing. I do independent soil consultancy work and I have about 250 dairy farms that I do soil fertility advice on and around about 200 sheep and beef farms. I like to see myself as a completely impartial, um, so I'm not sort of driven by you know whichever company pays me the, com the, the most commission, that sort of thing, but some of the FERT companies do pay me a commission, the same commission that they would get from, uh, from the particular rep from that particular fertiliser company. But yeah, my advice has got to be in the farmer's best interest. All of my recommendations um, that I write out, they are no obligation to use them, but those recommendations are what I can see as best for their soil. So on this particular farm here, he's got an effluent block and he's got a uh, non-effluent block on the other side of the road, which is also where the cows stay at night time, so they're night paddocks. And on uh, this side of the road where he lives, he's got a day block where the cows um, just graze during the day. So on night paddocks, you tend to find there's a lot more um, dung and urine returns, so therefore the potassium levels will generally be a lot higher on night paddocks than what they will be on day paddocks, so the potassium levels will be lower on this side of the road. Um, he's also bought two other new blocks, so they've had a different fertiliser history. So we ended up taking five soil tests on this place here. And then I like to do herbage tests at the same time, so I do soil tests, so long as the grass is in the right stage of growth, so it needs to be basically fresh, green and leafy. Soil tests I send over to Brookside Laboratories. They're based in the state, so they look at 14 elements in the soil. Um, so plants need 16 elements to grow. So most uh, people, when they get soil tests done by their fert reps, they will just look at six elements. So they're only really looking at sort of part of the picture. So there's a lot of trace elements and, uh, and other things that are, are critical, but for both um, plant growth and also for, um, for animal performance, animal health. Um, so you can do those through the herbage test, but I think the soil test tells you what's in the bank and the herbage just tells you what the plants being able to sort of take out of the bank and it also tells you what the animals are eating. There's a total of 13.7 tonne, so there's uh, One of the, the things on that's peculiar about Brookside, which they don't have in the New Zealand tests, is the way that they measure the base saturation percentages, which is looking at the ratios of positive elements around the soil colloid, which are your calcium, magnesium, potassium and sodium, the major elements. Uh, Professor William Warbrick, he was involved in setting up Brookside Laboratories back in uh, the early 50s and uh, his kind of claim to fame was sort of was looking at uh, how the um, mineral balance in the soil affected um, animal health and ultimately sort of human health. Um, so when you put on one element that will um, affect the availability of another element so you, you can get interference um, in terms of the uptake of, of certain elements once against the other. So calcium, magnesium, potassium and sodium, they're all strong positive elements. So what happens if a guy puts on potassium and your soil is overloaded in potassium, it can affect the uh, calcium and magnesium uptake in the plant which can make uh, cows go down with milk fever and grass staggers type sort of things. Conversely, if you get too much calcium, so you overline the soil, you can create a potassium deficiency in the soil. So it all comes down to having the right balance. And sort of Albrecht's work was sort of looking at the uh, those ratios, and he sort of he suggested that calcium should take up about uh, two thirds, around 65 to 70 percent of the total base saturation should be calcium, and the magnesium should be about a sixth of that. So you're looking around sort of 10 to 12 percent um, of magnesium, three to four percent potassium, and about one and a half percent sodium. 
The other thing we're looking at is the amount of humus in the soil, so the organic matter which is looking at the carbon content. So if I find a soil that's low in carbon I might recommend compost or animal manures uh, like chicken manure, goat manure, cow shed effluent, all that sort of stuff is sort of good for building up carbon in the soil. The other thing is the phosphate test that they use over there in Brookside. If you've got a pH above 7.5 they'll do the Olsen P test which is the standard that is used here in New Zealand. You'll see the Olsen P test is blank because they don't measure it because you haven't got a pH above 7.5. They don't believe it's accurate on um, acidic soils like we have in New Zealand. So they uh, revert to doing the Marduk 3 extraction which is a more modern te technique and I believe a much uh, more accurate technique for assessing the phosphate nutrient uh, status of the soil. And the Bray 2 which is a, quite a strong acid test which is good for picking up RPR fertilisers. And the other thing we're looking at, because we're looking at 14 elements, is your trace elements, your boron, your iron, manganese, copper, zinc and aluminium. Now, aluminium toxicity is a huge issue in a lot of sheep, sheep uh, hill country farms. So um, to address the aluminium toxicity, you've really got to put lime on. So that's one thing that, um, that I'm a great fan of when I get into hill country. And I'd say probably at least 50% of the uh, sheep and beef farms that I test, my first go-to place is addressing the aluminium toxicity by putting lime on. Uh, rather than putting on phosphate and where they've got aluminium toxicity um, they usually see a massive response to a, a really great response to lime it just gets a whole nitrogen cycle and everything working properly <laughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.